Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to do part two of the Solar Atmosphere tutorial, which is based on this tutorial, recreating the video Copilot Star and Hid film by Axel Wilkinson and Simon Jones, which is originally based on this tutorial, the Solar Atmosphere tutorial by Andrew Kramer and Video Copilot. One small thing I want to cover before I continue on with this tutorial, and that is in part one. And if you haven't seen part one, I'll put it up here for you to take a look at. Um, you definitely want to watch that before we start. I attempted to do what Axel Wilkinson did in the sphere effect, creating a sort of a light wrapping and I was unable to do it. So because of that, I went ahead and used light wraps, and that works really well. However, after I did that and I released the video, then I spoke with uh, a man by the name of Zach Allen. And Zach, who is really super intelligent, and I'm going to leave his YouTube channel right here. He has some great tutorials on HitFilm. He just recently, in fact, did a tutorial on the... Avengers title effect, and it is fantastic. So if you are not a subscriber of his channel, you should go right now and subscribe to his channel. Uh, but he watched the video and he said, hey, you know what? The problem that you had was that you didn't have one setting correct. So I'm going to show you what that is. In the environment map, I would turn on one of the glow layers and poof, nothing happens. And that was my problem. The reason is because uh, you need to twirl open the reflection uh, property and then up the amount to 1.00 and now you have that same light wrapping effect. So you can leave the old light wraps if you want or you can do it this way. I've decided I'm going to do it this way because this is going to be more like the original Axel Wilkinson part of the tutorial. So now we're going to move on to part two emissions the solar flare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new in the media bin, I'm going to create a new composite shot. And this composite shot is going to be 30 seconds, not 10 seconds. And there's a good reason for that. And I'm going to call this um, emissions map. And I'm going to click OK. Now, the reason it's 30 seconds is because we're going to use more than just 10 seconds worth of this video as we are adding it to the star, okay? We're gonna go into the folder of planes that I had created last time and bring in the 1920 by 1080 plane. And we'll just call this, um, you know, emissions, uh, although it doesn't really matter because um, we are only going to use this plane. And I'm going to bring in a fractal noise and we're gonna make some changes and adjustments to this fractal noise. I'm going to open this up. The first thing you can do if you want is change the type, maybe, maybe energy, uh, maybe wisp, uh, possibly fluid. Okay, but we're going to leave it at clouds because that is what Simon Jones did in the original video that I'm referencing. And we're going to go ahead and keep frame the seed. We'll start at zero. We'll go to the end of the 30 seconds and we will change this to 10 so it's going from 0 to 10 over a 30 second period also under the transform settings we want position we want to make it so that it goes up over time so uh, what Simon did was he started at negative 1000 and he keyframed it to go to 3000 which means that the y-axis essentially travels um, 4,000 pixels over this 30 seconds. I don't think it really matters, uh, you know, where you start and where you end, as long as it's about 4,000 pixels, because that's about the speed that you want those solar flares to happen, right? So it's sort of to taste. A lot of this stuff will be uh, to taste as well. We're going to adjust the scale to be 35 so that there's a little bit more fine detail on that. Um, under the sub settings, we're going to slightly change the influence to 60% to give just a little more detail there. And you can adjust the rotation again to taste. 
and Axel, or sorry, Simon adjusted that to 280 degrees. We're going to, under appearance, we are going to up the exposure to about 3.4. Again, though, that could be to taste, and that blows the whole thing out, so we got to take down the offset to negative 0.5. Uh, and so now we have these sort of flaming looking fractal noise effect happening here. And again, you can kind of adjust that to your taste, whatever you want. Um, then the final thing we want to do here is use an elliptical mask tool and just draw an elliptical mask around it, roughly in the center. And uh, twirling that open, we're going to feather that very heavily, about 200 pixels of feather. And the deal is, is that you, you just want to make sure that none of it goes off the edge of the frame, because then it will be obvious that it is just uh, an embedded composite shot there. So we, we want it to all dissipate before it gets off the frame. So there is our basic setup for the emissions map. Now we go back over into the sun comp, the main comp, and we'll drag the emissions map from the media bin into the comp. And you can see there it is uh, looking very lovely. I'm going to right click on it and change the blend mode to add. And I'm going to drag it down below the star map, but above the glows. Okay, so right now it's very linear. What we're going to do is make it spherical but we're not going to use the sphere effect instead we're going to use the polar warp effect which is much better in this particular case to use so we're going to drag that on and if i twirl open the polar warp effect under the center position we're going to use the original control point that our sun is so that way when i move that around everything moves around and you can see, if you look at this, that there are several different pieces to that. There is the inside radius here. There's the outside radius here. And there is a range, which is actually right here, this little arrow. And there is a rotation, and that's this guy up here. So you can sort of rotate it around. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use the numbers that Axel, or sorry, Simon used in his tutorial, but these are really set to taste kind of a thing. The range he set at 67 degrees, uh, the inner radius he made uh, 149, it's actually called the start radius, the end radius or the outer radius 786. Okay, so you get the feeling here as to how that's going to end up looking. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Okay, then what you want to do is you want to start duplicating this because right now it's only just over a piece of the star. So you'll take this and right click on it, say duplicate. Uh, and then if we open up and we'll just bring a little bit over here. Okay, about that much. Okay, now. It looks the same right now here as it does here, but if I take this and drag this a little bit, now it's at a different point, uh, and it looks completely different, right? Uh, and I might go in and make a few other changes, maybe, um, you know, decrease that, increase this, right? Um, we could change the range a little bit, maybe make it a little bigger, that kind of a thing, okay? Then I will duplicate it again, and then we will, again, make some adjustments. We'll bring it over here to this side, right? Slide it some more. Uh, maybe adjust the range again. Okay, that sort of a thing. And you want to keep doing that until you've got the whole star or solar feature here encircled. So you And it looks good. I mean, you're happy with it, right? After you've done that, then you'll be ready to finish it up and tie everything together. So that will happen in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will color grade everything. We will have, add our camera move. We're going to make the star's background here. We'll add some lens flares. We'll add the uh, heat distortions that are going to happen on here and basically just sum it all up and wrap it up 
to the end. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you like this sort of a thing. And hey, I really appreciate you watching.